So if you follow me on Twitter, you would have seen that, yes, I am definitely gonna review this one. And that's what I've got right now, the OnePlus 6. Doesn't really need an intro. Most of you will know this mobile phone by now. I'm a little late, I know. But what we have here is, of course, their latest flagship. So every five, six months, OnePlus roll out a new model. And with this one, they've made some, you could say, minor tweaks. The display now has a notch. I'm not really agreeing with that. But uh, even OnePlus themselves, they mentioned, they, they tweeted, learn to love the notch, something along those lines. And it got a huge amount of hate and backlash that they actually removed it. And that was before they announced that they have a notch phone. I'm not very fond of that trend, as most of you know, but I will not rant on about that. It's there. We have to accept it. We can't do anything about it. The screen is two point, uh, sorry, 6.28 inches. It's an optical AMOLED panel with a resolution of 2280 by 1080. And if it's anything like the previous panels, it should look really good. So very bright, deep blacks. We have a, a unibody build that should be quite thin. We have, of course, the alert slider. Dual cameras on the rear, so one is 16 megapixels, the other 20 f 1.7 aperture. They've now added optical image stabilization, which is good to see. We didn't have that on the previous model, and it was missing that, I feel, for low light photography. But we do, of course, have that brilliant electronic image stabilization using a gyro that works out really well for video and up to now 4K 60 frames per second. I'm looking forward to testing that out. It will be my first 4K 60 frames per second mobile phone. Front facing camera 16 megapixels with that electronic gyro stabilization, which is again good to see. Dual nano SIM. So the storage options 64 to 256 gigabytes UFS 2.1 spec. So it'll be really fast. Six to eight gigabytes of RAM. I have the base model which is just the 64 gigabytes and the six gigs of RAM. Wireless AC, as well as on here, of course, with Bluetooth 5. Let's check this one out. Okay, so let's check out the internals. I'm pretty sure most of you know this, so I'll go pretty quick here. So obviously we've got the phone. Here we have the case that they'll give us. So this is uh, one of those TPU style ones, I believe. Yes, it is. So. That's included there. So we've got instruction manual, SIM tool, and there is our case there. So yeah, it's it's a cheap kind of case. It does cover the buttons there at least, so they're not going to get damaged. And better than nothing, having these kind of cases. Of course, you can get their more premium cases from them, and those ones are a huge step up in quality over these ones. And here we have the typical dash charging cable. So this cable and the charger is required to get the maximum speeds. You can use other quick chargers, but you will not get the same kind of result using these cables. It is, is in a way a con because if you happen to be at your workplace, you've got this at home, you won't be able to charge as fast. And this is the dash charger. So it's a little chunky and it does get really quite hot when you are charging the phone there. So the maximum output is five volts but a rather high four amps. So along the front, we have that little notch there. Now I'm saying little notch because look at the size difference compared to my Mi 8. Now this one is really wide. Okay, they do have an infrared light in the front of that one. That's why it is so wide there. The camera is 16 megapixels, like the main camera on the rear. The bottom bezel, it's actually quite small. It's not too bad. It's very short, shorter than again, the Mi 8 here. So very quickly, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Love this move, they did not remove it. Microphone, Type-C port, and a downwards firing loudspeaker. Along the top, a secondary mic used for noise cancellation and in video right here. Right side, the alert slider. Now this is very handy. A lot of people saying you don't need this, but have you ever been in that situation where you're expecting a call, but you're talking to someone and you don't want to pull your phone out and put it in silent mode, Flick the switch up, it's in silent mode. You can do that when it's even in your pocket. We've got the power button right there and you can see one of the antenna lines at the top. So they are visible. On the left, you'll see two more antenna lines. We have the SIM tray there and the volume up and down buttons. So the rear dual cameras on here, the main one is 16 megapixels with optical image stabilization gyro assisted electronic image stabilization as well. So just like the 5, the 5T, the previous models. And we also have below it a 20 megapixel sensor. Now this one will be used when you get those depth effect photos. That's when it uses the dual cameras. So it'll capture the background to give you that blurred background and then your subject in focus. 
dual tone LED flash, below that the fingerprint reader, which is now more of a rectangle, not round, and then the OnePlus logo, of course. So in hand, the phone feels very, very familiar. It feels just like the OnePlus 5T, the OnePlus 5, and overall build quality is excellent. I like the, the rounded corners there, just make it a little bit better when you're holding it in hand. Now, very slippery, shiny back on here. This is the midnight black version, so it's got like a mirror-like finish. Gorilla Glass 5 on the front, and I think it's also Gorilla Glass 5 on the rear as well there. So overall, yes, premium build, feels great in hand. The buttons as well have a good feeling. They are made out of metal. So I will power it on here for the first time. I won't go through the whole setup. So one part of the setup that I will show you is to add your face data. I'll cover this really quick. Now that banding you're seeing slowly going down, that is a trait of AMOLED panels when I record them with my current Sony A6300 camera. It's not happening in person, so don't worry about that. But let's see what happens, how quick it is to scan my face data. Oh, okay, you gotta put a pin in first. Okay. So I gotta get my head in here. Obviously I've got my camera tripod and all that sort of stuff in the way. Okay, so that didn't take too long and now we are set up with the face unlocking. Now I know I didn't set this up ideally because my face wasn't really actually close enough when I scanned it. So I'll hit the power button, wake the device, and then look at it. And there we go, so that is very quick. That's only what, about a second or something. And just having a look at the gamma at the moment. So it's around 2.4, both panels about 2.3, 2.4 on gamma, but I'm seeing already that the blacks are a little bit deeper. Even with the screen protector on the OnePlus 6, it still looks a little deeper. Okay, so the bottom phone here, this is OnePlus 6. Have a look at the blacks. Remember the screen protector is on this one. And here we have the Mi 8. And it's a little hard to tell. It's very hard to capture this on camera, but you can see, at least from where I'm sitting, that the blacks just aren't as deep on the AMOLED panel of the Mi 8. Now the Mi 8, I believe, the culprit is not the screen, not the AMOLED panel from Samsung, it's actually the glass or the bonding, the process they have used here. So nice looking blacks coming through on this AMOLED panel on the OnePlus 6. And just to show some of the test images here, so it is a fantastic looking screen, very good. If you're not happy with the color calibration out of the box, you can go into the settings, and you can adjust that to your own personal preference. But I'm really liking what I'm seeing. The viewing angles as expected for an AMOLED panel, even again with my screen protector on, looks really good. So when you first get the phone, depending on what firmware it ships with, you're gonna have to be patient. There are a lot of updates to go through first. And of course, you must really grab these. These are bug fixes and important, but it is great to see that OnePlus are onto it and patching things. So the phone is running Android 8.1. It has a May 1st security patch level, which is good. So we do have a notification LED. It's actually just next to the earpiece. Left of it there, you can customize the colors and all that. You can enable certain gestures. There's quite a few in here. I like to have the double tap to wake one. Now the status bar, because of the notch, we still can't see the battery percent. Even if you change the battery style here, uh, to the circle one, it's not big enough to actually put the percent right in the middle of that, which is a, same, a shame there. So if you want to see it, of course, you're going to have to just swipe down. Then it will tell me I have 50% battery left. DRM info here. A lot of people want to see this. So it's wide vine level one. So this is going to be good for your Netflix. Treble check. This is an app to check for Project Treble. And the good news here, it has full seamless system update support. Just finished running and 2.2, and you can see the result of this benchmark is slightly slower than the Mi 8, but I mean, there's nothing to it. This is only a few thousand points here. So with my 64 gigabyte model here, you're looking at approximately 52 to 51 gigabytes free. I've already installed a few apps. I was about to comment that on-the-go storage doesn't seem to work, but it does. You have to remember to go into the advanced settings, and enable it, it automatically turns itself off after 10 minutes. This is for security reasons. So one of my very minor complaints, it's not a deal break or anything like that, it's nothing serious, but we don't have dual loudspeakers on the OnePlus 6. I was a bit disappointed that they didn't add this. So we have the one down firing speaker on the bottom.
tiny bit of bass. It is very loud though, I will give them that. So general use of the phone, it's just like the previous models in that it is really fast, very fluid, the experience, swapping between apps to scrolling through things, scrolling on Chrome, for example, really smooth, the screen refresh rate seems perfectly fine, the touch response is also really good, like it doesn't lag behind where your finger is, which sometimes happens on some, well, cheaper models really, not a premium phone, and just rendering pages and loading things up also too, really quite quick. I do like here with the notch that we have the notifications at least can be seen properly, something we don't get with Xiaomi. Now I mentioned that we cannot see the battery percent there, which is a little bit of a shame there, but we have to pull down, swipe down with the toggles, and then you see notifications, or when you had them on the Xiaomi, at least you get the small little icons with the OnePlus 6. So the camera app, it's very straightforward, it's self-explanatory here. Now I wanted to point out that video all the way up now to 60 frames per second, which is really good because I have reviewed now three other Snapdragon 845 mobiles, and those ones don't have 60 frames per second options. So it's great to see it because the hardware, of course, does support that. You've got your standard photo mode, you have your portrait mode, and with the photo mode too, you would have seen that we've got times one, times two, so that'll zoom in times two digital zoom there and it's all self-explanatory that is how you flip over then to the front facing camera so i'm going to go out now get a few shots to give you some samples and some video samples too from the front and rear cameras so with front facing video you get 1080p max no 4k option here but it does have that gyro assisted electronic image stabilization this is really good a lot of phones lack this so great for anyone that does uh, vlogging style videos this can be used as a secondary backup camera here because it is that stable you can see. So out in the sunlight here, um, hard conditions as well, of course, with the phone, but it's doing a good job. This is a uh, better than uh, the likes of the recent phones I have been looking at. Uh, Xiaomi's mobiles, they've been overexposing a lot, and of course they don't have this level of stability either. So uh, good front camera video performance. So this is a sample here of 4K 30 frames per second. We're limited to 10 minutes. A lot of manufacturers set that is to stop the phone from overheating. Now I do have reasonably shaky hands, but because we do have a combination of optical and electronic stabilization, footage is very steady and looks really good. Uh, the audio quality, I feel there is a little bit of a room for improvement here. Hopefully they can fix that with an up and coming update, but I will give you a demonstration of the stability just walking ahead here. You can see it is really quite good. Not bad at all. And of course we do have a 60 frames per second option as well. And fingerprint unlocking, I have tested it. It is very fast, super quick, just like the previous models. No issues with it, 10 out of 10 times. Very quick little size comparison here now. So this is the 5.9 inch Redmi Note 5, the Chinese model. This is the OnePlus 6, 6.28 inches. This one is 6.21 inches, the Xiaomi Mi 8. And then we have the Black Shark here at 5.99 inches this has a front facing fingerprint reader so it's quite a bit longer than all of them they're about the same when it comes to how tall they are the mi 8 and the one plus of course the Redmi note 5 is a little bit taller there but nothing compared to the beast and mammoth of my workhorse mi max 2 now the mi max 2 of course is 6.4 inches so a very large phone with your more traditional now 16 by 9 aspect ratio 
There is also this gaming mode. It's kind of hidden away. It's under the advanced settings. And what it can do is, well, you can see all the options we've got. So we can block notifications when you're in the gaming mode. You can add certain games to it. So that's going to automatically go to the gaming mode. And the network boost. So it's going to limit other applications, background tasks and things to try and reserve all that bandwidth for your gaming. So you, hopefully your ping rate, in theory, is going to be a little bit better there. Okay, guys. So quick recap here with my first impressions. This may change later on after using it for a couple of weeks before I release my full review of this phone. So it's looking really, really good. Uh, so far, I like it more than my Mi 8 now that I've had for almost two days. I like the implementation of their style of notch because it's a lot smaller. The Mi 8 has a very wide notch. That's It's a little bit ridiculous. I'm not a fan of the notch, as you know, but at least it's not so wide on this one here. Now the screen looks really good, so it's very bright. It's an optical AMOLED panel, deep blacks. Uh, the blacks look a little bit deeper as well than the Mi 8. I, I think that's because of the glass there is the reason. So we still have 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. I'll have to listen to some music on that later on in my full review process. Battery life, further benchmarks, gaming and things like that will be included in the full and final review. I have some camera comparisons coming up. There's so far really not a lot that I can really complain about. I'm very nitpicky, but this is looking like a fantastic phone. The operating system is very fast. I like that as is kind of like a similar to a stock experience, but with a lot more tweaks and settings that you've got in there with the Oxygen iOS. Battery life, I of course have an update on that, but the battery capacity, I really wish they could increase that somehow. I don't mind if it was a millimeter thicker and it had a 4,000 or 3,900, 3,800 milliamp hour battery would just be a little bit better there. The cameras do look like a step up from the OnePlus 5T. It's great they've gone with optical image stabilization there too. So as I mentioned, camera comparisons will be coming. Stay tuned for the channel for that. And I do hope to catch you back really soon with my next up and coming video. Bye for now.